more strategy frameworks out there than you can shake a stick at. That is absolutely true. Do you recommend choosing one, getting really fluent with it and sticking with it through thick and thin or learning a few bits more superficially and then picking and choosing the framework on a case by case basis? So I think we might have some different opinions on the call related to this. So um, certainly raise your hand if you'd like to, to chime in and I'll, I'll start the party and then I'll pass it to Jeff. So first things first, let's clarify uh, what we mean by frameworks. And I think that's a, um, that's a, that's a, a broad term. So um, one way to think about frameworks, and it's, it was what Jeff did a masterclass on, was the structure of your strategic goals or your strategic objectives. So the structure of your plan. We like to use the word, that, that word framework in that fashion. And I think what this questioner is actually asking about is, is models, planning and strategy models, which is what's over on the solution section right now. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna reframe this to models for now. And the models would be the different um, methods for moving from the where to the what to the how. Um, and so as, as the questioner asked, um, right, there's a million of them. I think that definitionally, um, I, they're up on the screen right now, behaviorally and process wise, that's where there's some pretty different, um, uh, different intentions behind these different models. And I'd like to just comment, I actually think it would be pretty cool to do um, a deep dive one of our third Wednesdays on different models and who, who's used what and just kind of to do some pro and cons on these um, because I think that would be that would act like this is like a massive topic right um, but to answer the questioner's uh, question really directly one of the things that I'm uh, pretty dogmatic about is um, as I often say it doesn't matter if we call you know, the different elements of a plan, like, you know, from mission, vision, you know, strategic goals, objectives, initiatives, whatever. It doesn't matter if we call them, you know, apples, kumquats, bananas, but it does matter that we're consistent with the terminology in an organization. And um, it, that matters. And it matters that you are consistent definitionally with what's the where, what's the what, what's the how. And then, you know, from a measurement perspective, how do we know that we're succeeding and winning, right? And how you configure all of that um, can be quite challenging. Um, and I do think that there are good ideas from different models. And we use a bunch of different models, too. Um, we don't necessarily have a dogmatic approach um, by any stretch. So, but I do think it's really, really important to 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 pick the language and stick with it and stick with your definitions. So that does matter. Um, so what you have up here right now are just some of the examples, and it, by, by all means, there's probably more. I, I know there's more, I missed some, I know that I did. And so just to call it out for a second, you know, the entrepreneurial operating system, that is actually a full blown system that has, you know, terminology to it and a cadence, but that is the standard strategic management practice and cycle. It just gave it an interesting name to it. The balance scorecard, um, again, um, is, is something that a lot of us are really familiar with, but that's one of the models. You know, kind of a traditional model would be, you know, strategic goals, objectives, initiatives, KPIs. OKRs are, are you know, taking over the world, it feels like right about now. And again, the, the language on this is super important, but the cadence and the cycle is really what is getting everybody excited about the quarterly management, right? And then you, you know, we talked about that earlier in the fall, really important um, to understand that, you know, these are planning models, the strategy piece on this is not reflected. Um, OSGM, uh, V2 MOM, right? That's Salesforce's model. Um, and then, you know, Hoshin, of course. So there's more, um, but back to kind of the comment from the from the um, questioner is, I would pick one um, that is language, that you're clear about the language and the definition, and then you are clear about the process. So Jeff, anything to add? Yeah, I would, you know, I think my addition to this is, you know, don't find the one model, make it your model. Start, there are strengths to all of these. And I think it's important 
it is okay to take a little from one, something from another, and make it your own based on your culture, your previous experiences, you know, wh what the team is ready to adopt and have become part of their DNA. Um, so it it's okay to kind of pick the best of what is most meaningful to you from some of these models and that make it your own. It's okay. Yeah, I think that's true. Is there any any other comments on all of that? That's that's kind of pretty straightforward in that regard. Chief Moore, you're off mute. Go right ahead. You know, it's maybe not so uh, important. It is important as, as to the the methodology, but just actually doing it is probably uh, I'd say uh, ninety percent of it. You know, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. So uh, just get going. You know what, I think that's totally true. And I, you know, maybe that's another uh, fine point to put on this and then uh, we can leave it where it is, is um, I think the power, and then I'll go to you, Neil. I think the power of this work is the rigor of the process. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the Salesforce process has a specific rigor and OKRs has a specific rigor and um, the EOS has a specific rigor. And so that is where change happens, is where month after month and week after week and quarter after quarter, we are consistently coming together in a consistent manner to talk about how did we do, look back 20%, look forward 80%, how, where are we going, and are we moving toward that future state that we envisioned? And that, that we stick with that will affect change, right? Whatever we call these things. So um, Neil, your hand was up, go right ahead. No, I just wanted to reiterate what what uh, what Jeff was saying, and and from my own experience in starting to delve into this field, is that you know it's a it's a very iterative iterative process, and I think that a one size fits all uh, is very. I quickly came to the conclusion that that just does not exist, uh, uh, at least for me, and that you know uh, multiple uh, methodologies at the right time with the right client in the right context is is where we can add the greatest value i think there's a, a framework and structure so uh, I'm, I'm glad to hear some validation about that because that's what i was kind of experiencing firsthand um I, i'm you know as an account as a as a finance person there's a linear progression of things to do this is not <laughs> linear um and this is you know this is very uh, collaborative and iterative and and how the conversation sh takes shape is very uh, the nuances of that have been very uh, enlightening. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I just added this piece here too. These models have intrinsic, um, they have character. And pick the model that fits with the organizational culture. There, you know, um, and so I'll, I'll just kind of leave it at that. But that is, that is absolutely true. So.